So I'm Aga, I'm Aga Naploha, and I live in Warsaw in Poland. So actually we should try to speak Russian, Polish, and, and find out how we can communicate, but I'll be speaking in English. Um, and I used to learn Russian, but I but we can try later to practice. Uh, so the title of my talk is Breaking the Norm with Creative CSS. And what does breaking the norm means in terms of web design and web development? And is CSS always creative? Well, hopefully you'll get answer to these questions after my talk or during my talk. Um, but before I start, uh, I would like to tell you who I am and why I'm actually talking about this topic. So uh, apart from working at Adobe, um, I also do a lot of different things and initiatives and side projects. So um, I run an organization which is called The Awesomes. So me and my friend, we started to organize coding workshops for people. And, and right now I'm organizing conferences, meetups, and some sorts of different activities connected with design, code, technology, and art. Um, I also do the talks, um, and I'm here to give you one. Uh, I'm traveling around different cities and countries, meeting different cultures and people, and I think it's so inspiring. So if you have, if you have ever thought of doing so, like giving a talk, um, I think you should, you should try. If you, if you have stage fright, you should talk to me, because I'm always seriously nervous, uh, but it's worth doing it, seriously. So apart from traveling, giving talks, organizing workshops, I also uh, launched my uh, course, my online classes on Skillshare. So Skillshare is a platform, online platform, and everyone can actually create a course there. Um, well, sorry, this video should be there. So um, I, I created my, my first online classes on animating SVG for beginners, for designers. So if you know anyone who would like to be interested, who should be interested in it, just pass this link. And uh, past weekend, so it was on Saturday and Sunday, I organized a conference for UX designers. And this is the moment when I would like to uh, thank you to the, all the organizers and volunteers, because I know it's such a hard work. So if we could just like give a round of applause to everyone who is, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Because I know myself, it, like, it's tons of work. So now in the photo, the task is to find me. Well, I'm here. <laughs> so uh, because this is the, the first talk, I would like to use some of my time to actually meet you. So um, I have a small game. You should stand up. Yes, you should stand up. And um, I'm Aga. And now I would like to all of you to speak out loud your name if I tell one, two, three. So I'll be, I'll be counting in Russian. So Adin, dva, tri, Aga. Okay, louder, because I, I, can't, I can't hear the, the, the names from like... <laughs> so, Adin, dva, tri, Aga. Okay, nice to meet you. You can sit. <laughs> so, we're now uh, groups of friends, and it's, oh my god, it's so much easier to speak in, in, in front of friends instead of like strange people. So, um, yeah, so, hello, nice to meet you. So, now I can start. So, I'd like to begin with a story. One day I was sitting at work and I got a task, just create a website. Well, that should be easy, that should be something natural. I do this for a living. But actually this task was like my, my huge problem. I was sitting and I had no idea, so I was kind of lost. And I thought that, well, maybe this is the time where I, I'm totally like lacking the creative power. Maybe I should change my job and profession because I'm not very into design and code. Like, I think that this is the time to, to, to start something fresh and new. So um, this was a very dramatic time for me. Um, and I was talking with my friend, and he told me, well, you should get just some sorts of inf inspirations. So uh, like, I started to think, OK, so where I usually look for the inspiration? Well, this is the internet. So I opened the websites that I use daily. Um, this is the screenshot of PayPal from 2017. Uh, and I was looking on this website and other sections and the footer. And I also visited Trello's website and was exploring some sort of um, design elements. And I also visited Evernote because it's one of my favorite app. And all these websites together, they looked like this. And I thought, that, well, I didn't find any inspiration there. I still like kind of 
I'm still kind of depressed in terms of like my creativity. So um, at that time, my friend sent me this thing, and I realized that yay, like we're 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 kind of like trying to um, to copy some ideas, and the result is that all the websites look the same. So I was like started to realize that maybe like we're living in 12 columns grid and free boxes. And I was wondering, okay, is it only me that think that it's happening like that? Or maybe the whole World Wide Web has fallen into somewhat boring state. And I've stumbled upon this article, which states that web design is completely boring. And I thought like, yes, this is what I, what I was like struggling with a lot. So um, I was very worried that you know that the internet should be like a place of like fun things, um, creati like endless creativity, but actually everything looks the same. So all the you know like all the layouts that we create as, as are, are the same, and like we somehow lost the the, the true art, and we're in the stagnation point. So instead of being online all the time, I I decided to take an uh, a detox and uh, look for the inspiration offline in the analog world. I know it's not very popular right now. Uh, we're addicted to, uh, to internet, but um, I decided that, okay, we have books, we have many things to, to look at, so maybe I'll find the inspiration there. And this was a very good decision because actually the, the thing that was closest in my hand uh, were the old fashioned magazines I got from my friend. And I started flipping through and saw all these images and different, th some sort of layouts. And I realized that this was it. This was something that I was looking for. Um, and as you can see, there are some like circles and like not, not straight lines. So I realized that, yeah, print is something that I really like. Um, and what's funny is that by many people, print is regarded as that medu medium. And actually, it, it, it has so many inspiration inside. Um, so um, I decided to follow this trend and to dig deeper. Um, and I was looking on the art, artwork, the layouts, like everything is, uh, was carefully assembled to support the content, to make it more um, unusual. So when I was slowly getting back to the online reality, I stumbled upon um, this website, which is called Brutalist Website, and I'm really curious who has ever heard about Brutalist Website? Could you raise your hand? Okay. Okay, so it's even better that some of you don't know because now you'll be like, whoa, what's happening? So um, in my definition, Brutalist Websites are the website, like they're web non-conformists. They just like forget about all the rules, which sometimes might be painful in terms of you user experience. But at the same time, it's yeah, it's it's extreme. It's something we need. It's something totally new and fresh. It's like playful web. It's it's different if you compare it to PayPal and Evernote and other. Uh, dull things, uh, you can see that it's something that I can spend hours on this website and, and have fun. Of course, like we cannot compare uh, serious services, uh, financial services with, uh, with portfolios or our uh, museum's website, but still we need to incorporate this craziness into our web. So um, Brutalist websites were something that just opened my eyes very widely. And after that, I also visited, um, this is the, call, the website called Hover States, and it gathers all the um, unusual solutions uh, and design elements. And what is different from Dribbble or Behance is that they present, some, yeah, they, they present something that is really different from what we see uh, daily on the web. And I really like the ideas, and you can find there are many, many inspiration. If you don't believe me that Brutalist website is the trend that you should follow, you can check out serious services or serious websites like Bloomberg online. And this is the, the really wrong article, but really great, so you should read it, uh, what is code. And I love, I love the layout of this website, although the most important thing is the content, 
uh, you ha you can have fun while reading it. Like you c you have some gifts from like 90s like art artwork uh, from the from um, PowerPoint or something like that. I love it. So this was the example to prove that actually um, that actually you should try incorporate those crazy ideas into your projects. But now you're wondering, OK, so where is CSS? Because we want to listen about CSS, and we want to see some code. Uh, well, the good part is that we are heading to this part, so no worries. Um, so I was trying to challenge myself and to see what's possible with CSS. Because like with the paper, with scissors, with a pen, uh, with Photoshop, we can do everything what we want in terms of graphics design. But later, we have to translate it to the language of the web. Um, so I was uh, visiting different websites. I was uh, spending hours on Pinterest and gathering all the ideas that I could try to, to do on the web. And these are, m some of them are like created for the web and some are typically for print. And this was my somehow the, like the CSS challenge to, to check like what I can do with CSS properties. Uh, maybe there are some new things that I can, uh, I can try to test um, or to apply in a different manner the something like we, we haven't already tried. So the, the thing that like first comes to my mind is CSS Grid. And I know it's this topic is now getting very, like it, it's everywhere because it was shipped to, to the browser. So, um, so it's important. But at the same time, I would like to, I would like to highlight that CSS Grid can be a, an, like a tool for a new design language somehow because we can do a really crazy stuff like, uh, like multi-column um, layouts and, and really, um, really fun fun things. Um, if you're not super familiar with CSS Grid, there are tons of tools which you can help you. And there is, for instance, Mozilla. Um, they, they have um, um, a great website which you should check out if you, have or if you haven't already. Um, and if you're wondering where to start, you can take an existing layout. This layout was built without CSS Grid, but you can try to rewrite it to, to check the possibilities of CSS Grid. And I think that this is a perfect example to, to check how, how um, we can use CSS Grid and how to create those overlapping effects. But the thing that I would like to focus more is clipping and clip path. Um, I don't know whether you used clip. Uh, this is the deprecated property. Uh, but now we're having clip path. And clip path means just the shape's boundary. Um, so it's just like the definition of the shape. And if I have to explain it to designers, I would tell that, well, it's like uh, using scissors and piece of paper. So everything which uh, what is inside the shape is visible, and everything which is outside is just hidden. So we use clipping to just clip things and show or hide uh, some elements. Um, so we can apply it in uh, various manners. We can use uh, inset just to make a rectangle. Uh, we can use circle to make a circle. Uh, we can use, for, for more sophisticated shapes, we can use polygon. Uh, but the thing that I'm mostly inspired by is URL function, because you can apply the shape that you create, for instance, in Illustrator or Inkscape or any other graphics, web vector graphics editor, and have uh, really cool effects. So this is the example I created. Um, as you can see, there are splashes of water, um, and also the mm, the background is um, is attached, so it, it it gives you like the kind of a parallax. Um, effect. Um, so let's look into the code. So it's just the, uh, the container, the div, uh, where you just apply the background. You've got the clip path, um, which reference to the shape I created. Um, and this is the splash of water. And that's it. It's very simple. Um, so if you look into the code, um, we've got SVG. So the shape is, uh, is NV SVG code. It's uh, just copied and pasted to um, to the code editor uh, to HTML document, and it's the important thing is that the shape should be uh, between the defs tags. Defs stands for a definition, so it won't be generated on it won't be seen on the page, but it will be there, so we can reference to the shape later on. Um, we got ID for it, water, and just in CSS, we just reference to water, and that's it. Um, so. 
nothing complicated, um, which you can try. And the good thing is that um, before a clipping path was only um, possible to uh, to apply with the with the, um, the 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 URL function, and now uh, the uh, Firefox also supports basic shapes. So the browser support is getting better and better. If you're wondering that. Well, it's fun, but it's nothing revolutionary. I would like to show you some example that maybe will be the future of the web. Well, we'll see. Um, so when I was like uh, trying to experiment, I thought that maybe we can use clipping to clip out some elements of the image, which we usually do in Photoshop and later send the, uh, the PNG files with transparency to developers. So you can see the plants here, um, apart from that they are moving. Uh, they also cut it out. So if I comment out the, the clip path, you'll see that it's just an image. But if I apply the clip path, um, the, the plants are cut it out. So would I need to do something like this? Well, yeah, I need to have a shape prepare. Um, uh, and uh, later on, I can apply this to, uh, to my simple raster file, which is JPEG. So anyway, designers or someone is needed to, to prepare this shape. So it's kind of a double work, uh, but I'll tell you in a minute why it's, um, it's worth checking out this method. So in terms of code, it's just the same as the previous example. Um, we have just the, the, the shape defined in HTML. Um, the shape was created in Illustrator, uh, so it's SVG. Um, then later, we just apply it in CSS. Yeah, and you're wondering, okay, so it's like double work because I need to prepare the shape anyway, so maybe it's just better to cut out the image in Photoshop and have the PNG files with transparency. Well, the answer is that the size. Of course, we know that PNG weighs more. Uh, in this particular example, it's six, time, six times more. So if we have just a JPEG file and a SVG, which is like a couple of lines of code, uh, we can save a six uh, six times like, like yeah we can save a lot of uh, a lot of um, a lot of uh, file weight so it's better in terms of performance um, and if you think that well this method it, it's got not going to work everywhere um, I'm I'm sending you the article by Chris Coyer and he also uh, applied this method in his example. So maybe, maybe we'll have more examples like that. I think this is a nice method to experiment with. Um, maybe we can also use it for, uh, for further um, interesting animations. I don't know, I don't know, but uh, you should definitely check it out. And in terms of the browser support, uh, it's getting better, it's getting better. Um, so um, yeah, so the future will be bright, hopefully. Of course, IE and Edge doesn't, uh, don't support it. Well, it happens. Um, and Opera. OK, so heading now to masking. Oh, for me, it's a very attracting um, CSS property because um, we can do crazy stuff as well. And masking is also about hiding and showing some elements, but it's different from, from clipping. Um, so the mask is like we have the mask prepared, and mask is composited with our image. And um, it affects the alpha channel. It means that we can have some uh, partial transparency, so different level of transparencies. So again, we can apply uh, masking in CSS by various methods. Uh, we can use URL function, um, and we can use here um, um, the the raster images like PNG. We can use a gradient because, yeah, I, I told you that masking is, can be like partially transparent, so the gradient gradient can be, can be partially transparent, so we can use it here as well. And we can also use um, the shapes uh, defined in, uh, in SVG. Um, so it's good to know that Firefox and IE support only the, the last method, so the one with URL function with the shape uh, defined in SVG. And if you apply masking, you have to remember about vendor prefixes because otherwise it won't work. So just please remember. Um, 
and oh something's wrong with my fonts okay so uh what i love about masking is that we have the same properties as for css background so we can decide whether a mask should be repeated what should be the size of the mask um and it also gives us a lot of possibilities to experiment um and this is the example i prepared so as you can see so th th this blue thing this blob or splash or whatever you call it, um, has uh, some some sorts of transparencies, and uh, on the your right, um, there is a div container uh, with the background applied. It's GIF file, um, and I applied the the mask, so it is just like the in the shape within the shape of the um, of this blob, and you can see that the transparency is. Transparencies are there, and I love this effect. Really, it's something that I really, really like. Um, so we we can just have a simple GIF and later apply mask and um, and do some crazy stuff. Um, and in terms of sub browser support, the situation is always al almost the same. <laughs> so unfortunately, unfortunately, I and and Edge um, don't support it, like the older version of Edge, but Opera as well. But uh, th this shouldn't be the reason to, to forget about this property. We should experiment, definitely. So now you're wondering, OK, so what's the difference between clipping and masking, and when I should actually use clipping, when masking? So just please remember that clipping are like vectors. Um, so we apply vector shapes, uh, the shapes that are um, in SVG. Um, and for masking, we can have raster images, like PNGs with uh, transparencies. And uh, if we do want to have this effect uh, I showed you with, with this blob and this partial transparencies, yeah, we have to use masking. But if you're interested in having like the perfectly clear vision, everything crisp, um, just please use clipping because we have vector files, so um, it, it will be the best option. And the thing that I'd like to mention as well is that masking is more computation um, consume like more uh, memory consuming because there are some computations because it goes pixels by pixel by pixel. So yeah, good to know about it as well. Um, okay, so next properties, it's shape outside. Um, and who said that text containers always need to be uh, rectangular and boxy? Uh, we can have some crazy shapes as well in terms of the, the content and text. Um, and it can be achieved by, by applying shape outside or shape inside. I'll be talking about shape, in, uh, shape outside, but everything applies to shape uh, inside as well. So shape outside, we just apply the shape. Uh, so we can have a circle. And we can, of course, create more sophisticated things uh, with polygon. Again, we have possible to create rectangular ellipse. Um, but of course, uh, we can uh, define our custom shape and by applying URL function. And in this example, I'm having just a block of text. And as you can see, it just like wraps around the, the Q letter, which is gold. And I think it's, it's just the perfect example for Moscow because it's gold. And <laughs> I <laughs> like in our hotel, everything is, is gold and it's great because I love gold. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, there is uh, also the splash of paint, of gold paint. Um, and you can see that the text wraps around this, this shape. So how is it done? Um, well, there are a couple of things happening. So there's a, the element is floated, so you can see that it has float left. The shape outside is applied. Um, we also have masking here, so uh, lots of things happening. But uh, yeah, there, there was just like, a, maybe we can wait till it will be looped. Uh, as you, if you just like use dev tools, you will see that this shape is actually um, rendered somehow by, by the dev tools, and you can see it as well. Um, so the important thing is that um, to make it work, uh, the element should be floated. So without it, the shape outside won't work. We also have to define either height or width to set the coordinate system. So float, height, or width. 
Uh, in my example, there was a background uh, because it was just like a container with the background. I also have the mask image because uh, shape outside doesn't change anything uh, about this element. It changes only the area of the element. So um, thanks to it, um, th our background will be clipped to this Q letter. Um, and of course, we have shape outside that um, makes our content wraps around the, the defined shape. So these are the things to remember um, to create the exactly uh, this type of effect. And the good news is that uh, CSS shapes land in Firefox for everyone. Uh, so it, it is the news from September, from the beginning of September. And Razvan Kaliman, um, he created a great CSS shapes editor, so you can download it for Chrome, and you can actually like play with the shape and and see like uh, what's visible with it. I strongly recommend you to to play with with this uh, plugin. So as you can see, it's getting better because like uh, when I was experimenting, the Firefox was red, but now it's green, so it's 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 good. It's good. While experimenting, um, I was uh, I was wondering why it doesn't work. Um, because uh, the thing is that it's uh, you have to have chorus enabled. I checked this in the console. Uh, I was like, oh, what the heck is it? Like, usually you have to know that on uh, conferences for developers, I tend to call myself designer, and for a conference on, on conferences for designers, I tend to I tend to call myself developer. So now I'm designer, and I like read this message like, what's happening? Yeah, and I found out that it's course. So of course, this cross origin resource sharing. So if you would like to experiment with shape outside, you have to have like use like the all the files have to use the same uh, server. So the like. You can use a remote web server or a local host to, uh, to, to check it out. Yes, and this is the, to prove you, this is the, the, the example uh, from, I, I took some time ago that Firefox was red. So yeah, so now it's, it's getting better. Okay, so the last thing that I would like to tell you about is SVG. Uh, I love SVG. I can't imagine my life with SVG without SVG. Um, why? Because SVG is searchable, it's selectable, it's accessible. You can. It's it's just like I think it's a perfect match between designers and developers because it's uh, so visually oriented. But at the same time, you have the code part. Um, so uh, I tend to use a lot of different SVGs, graphics, and shapes, and later try to experiment with it. Um, so I think that we should have more SVGs on our website. And this is just a very simple example, but I haven't uh, seen a lot of it on the web. And I don't know why, because I think it looks nice. So this is just a basic text, and it's placed on the, on the path um, that was created in Illustrator. So later, it was generated on the web, and um, and that's it. And what I love about it is that you can select the text. It's not an image. Like a few years back, probably all the developers would need to, like, you know, cut out the image with transparency and place it on web. But today we can have a real text, and user can actually copy this. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's also it's searchable, so it's, it's just great. So I think that we should use SVG more often, definitely. And. This was the uh, the example that I prepared for you, just uh, like uh, an exercise. Um, but this is the real example taken from the web. I was just like looking for some sorts of inspiration, and I found this website, and they're using SVG in a quite a similar manner. So it's happening. And right now, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the the trend that was really hot last year. Um, in 2018, I think it's still still on. Um, so it's the chaos that is uh, that uh, that 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 is uh, on on some sort of um, creative website. So everything like glitches, jamming, everything is welcome and um, to to create a crazy effects. Um, 
So failures and errors, like whatever you do, this, this should be on your web um, because it's very popular and trendy. And uh, my biggest inspiration was this Instagram account. It's called Pretty Ugly Project. Uh, and I totally agree that it's something beautiful, something pretty, and at the same time extremely ugly <laughs> in terms of this projects and work. Uh, this is created by Martina, she's Polish, and these work are extremely popular. Um, I really like that it's something new, it's something fresh. Um, and she also uh, uses colleges, um, collages to, to create such effects. So I always really wanted to somehow to take the idea of creating a collage and bring it to on the web by using some CSS properties. And the website that I think uh, like perfectly addresses uh, this trend uh, is this website. Actually, this website is the um, the architecture studio, I guess, and it should be serious. Hi, we architectures, but ac actually architects, sorry. But um, but I love that they decided to be bold and place this effect on the web. So you've got the text is cute, you've got like this tabs, so it's connected with architecture. So you don't need to like do a really like a lot to give your website a kind of a character, something unique. And I was wondering, okay, I would like to do something like this. Probably I will not be able to, but I started to, uh, to look on the web, and for instance, in CodePen, and I suddenly found it. So this is the CodePen created by James Bosworth. And actually, you can do it only with CSS, without JS. So it's even better for me. Um, so as you can see, it's just like having fun and experimenting. And we can totally deliver a new um, new face of the, of the web design. So my, my goal was to uh, encourage you that w w World Wide Web, that web design should be more crazy. And I do believe that we can make it happen. I know that very often we do have some serious clients that, or financial services or whatever, and they're totally not interested in Brutalist's website. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you can send them some links maybe. Maybe we'll uh, persuade them. Uh, but anyway, you, I, I believe that you have some side projects, portfolios, and we need more creative power on the web. Um, and when I was when, one year ago, when I was in St. Petersburg, I was in Hermitage, and uh, there was an exhibition. And um, I'm a huge fan of Henri Matisse, uh, Matisse's paintings. And he said that creativity takes courage. And I do really believe that, like, without taking a risk, we're not going to make creative stuff. We have to learn how to deal with, uh, with th like, taking the plunge to do something different, do something creative. And the thing is that whenever I go on a conferences on the conference with this talk i try to the day before the, the my talk i try to explore this city it looks for some elements which might be inspiring for you in the analog world for me if you remember it was print so like the magazines but actually it can be architecture it can be an exhibition unfortunately i arrived uh in moscow yesterday and i didn't uh, didn't um, have a chance to, to go to the museum or art galleries. I'm planning to go to Garage. Um, but I can show you an example. I was in Lisbon uh, at MAT, so this Museum of Architecture, Arts and Technology, and there was an amazing, amazing, amazing uh, exhibition. Uh, it was about human uh, in the world and about like how we're going to live in the future. And the big part of it was the, was the mirror, which was changing to the to the like a uh, container with jellyfish. Uh, well, if I yeah, now you probably can't get the idea what was the the whole exhibition about. But if you can Google it out, I strongly recommend because it was one of the best museum or art galleries experience I've ever had. Seriously. Um, but uh, in terms of uh, Russian culture and Russian Hermitage. Uh, I, uh, my friend told me to visit Strelka Institute. I don't know whether you're familiar. D does anyone know Strelka? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I wish I, I could study there. It's, oh, it's, it's amazing. I love the design. I love that they have courage, although they like kind of, you know, school. Um, they're, they're totally different. I love every section of the web. I love the colors and the pictures. And it's, I think that this is a huge source of inspiration, at least for me. And also architecture, this is the cosmos. I'm, I'm planning to see it as well. Um, so uh, it's 
this picture is amazing. I think it, it like, wow. So I think that you should take some inspiration from the world around you and try to somehow uh, like digest and later um, transform them on the, on the website you're creating. And this is Garage, yeah, huh, oh, I, I need to go there because it looks awesome. Um, so if you have any other places for me, like you, you, you were recommending, just write me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is there, Agana Floha. Or you can email me or just come and tell. I'm looking for places like, like yeah, something unusual um, or something typically Russian um, because I also want to explore Russia. Um, so yeah, summing up, I do believe we have courage. I do believe that we can, we can use CSS in order to create crazy stuff. We can do collages. We can clip out some elements. Um, just the only thing is our like our creativity and our um, our creative power. Just after like all all these like inspiring things, uh, remember about canIuse.com because many of these things unfortunately won't work. But this this shouldn't be the excuse to abandon those properties. I think that it should be that you. Um, you should have in mind and use in your projects. And I do have some stickers, the, the awesome stickers which you see uh, there. So if you're interested, uh, you can just answer the, the questions which, CRS, which, oh, sorry, which CSS properties are necessary to achieve this kind of effect. Uh, I was showing the Q letter, this is the A letter, but yeah, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Um, just please use the, the, the conference handle and my handle and um, and find you later somewhere and give you the stickers, if you're interested, of course. So I do believe that we can break the norm together. Um, and I'm very active on Instagram. If there's anyone on Instagram, um, let me know. Um, and uh, with the Instagram, there is another story. Uh, my mom always, like when I t tell her that I'm going on a conference, she's asking like, are you going to give a talk or are you organizing it? Like, like she's totally not into this topic. So now I would like to take a picture of you for my mom. Can I do this? Because like she won't believe that there are so many people listening to me. I think she should be proud. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. And another one. And just give me a sec, I'm going to create a GIF, the Boomerang app, if you know. And I'm going to post it on my Instagram, so you can later, oh, it will be tough, okay, like this. One, two, three, uh, you, can, you should move, actually. You can wave to me. Yay, and second part? <laughs> yeah, I'm just using my time. Yeah, I have one hour slot, I can do whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yay, thank you. Okay, uh, so, oh my god, oh, it's gone. It was the sign that I should stop. <laughs> yeah, so thank you, spasiba, uh, and enjoy the rest of the conference. Applausmente. <laughs> that was cool, thanks. And I already have our first uh, question from Telegram uh, channel. <clears throat> One of your examples was amazing staircase uh, with uh, text and yeah. uh, it scrolled and the text moved uh, along staircase. Any URL or code pen or something for this particular example? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a, you can actually take the, the address of the code pen. I think that the best would be just experiment to check out the the code pen. This is the address, um, but actually it's a, there are small letters, so I can just tweet 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 this address. So you yeah, it will be perfect. And uh, more ideas for our guests to yeah. follow you on Twitter. Oh, okay, uh, thank you. <laughs> and now we have uh, some time. Please stop me after time runs out uh, to have questions from uh, the hall, please, in English or Russian. Oh, Thank you. Very nice beginning of the day for me. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, I still remember most creative time of the web is flash time. Yeah. Uh -huh. When uh, many w extremely creative sites and extremely awful. Yeah. <laughs> extremely unuseful. It's like uh, Vietnam flashbacks for me. <laughs> uh, so, uh, how do you think? Uh, is the same. Uh, Awful future awaiting for us, but with CSS. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I wish. I wish. I, I wish we, we could have such 
awful future because yeah I remember those times as well although I I wasn't very into like I was rather a user passive user rather than a coder but I remember all the website I remember the website with Eminem like it was like interactive kind of um, and I wish that people could be more creative I think that uh, if you open, I don't know whether you know the product hand, so it's like the website that gathers all the different startups. And if you open like every every website that is mentioned there, maybe not every, but like uh, a few of the like a couple of them, uh, you will see that basically all the websites are the same. And it's so sad that we've got you know we've got the era of flat design, which is great because it's like you know. Um, the, the, the aesthetics, uh, and everyone tries to be uh, Apple, like with a very, minimist, mini, very mini, minimalistic design. But we also should like, ask our question, like, what is the character of the company? What we want to convey? Like, is it playful or not? Maybe we can somehow have the anti-design or brutalist website patterns in our website. So I, I really hope that people um, will use CSS in different ways. So what I, what, what I was trying to also to like my message was that maybe you can take some properties that usually you use for different purposes, but maybe you can like do some crazy stuff like with those stairs. And um, so I do hope that the future will be bright. And and my belief is that that designers will be more and more attracted to code because we've got dev tools, we've got so many plugins to to make it easier for them to understand the code and the web. So I really hope that CSS will be the bridge between designers and developers and will be like a platform of crazy ideas. Oh, uh, I try to uh, prepare <laughs> myself. <thank> yeah, <laughs> for ugly stuff. <laughs> Prashu. Uh, hey, first of all, thanks for the very inspiring talk today. Thank and, you. Um, uh, my question is quite uh, a bit open. But uh, I believe at some point uh, this brutalist design will become a norm. Yeah. Uh, so like more designers yeah. will adopt uh, yeah. you know, yeah. things you show today, uh, and which is cool, yeah. by the way. But um, my question is, what you believe is going to be the next thing? Where uh, should we mm. gather the next inspiration? Like. Yeah, well, yeah. I, unfortunately, I cannot foresee the future. But yeah, I do believe. I do totally do believe that this nor like this anti-pattern is now it's like starting to be a norm so now I have to prepare another talk with not brutalist but something different but um, I would like to like I think that now that motion and video uh, is it's getting on the web uh, and it's more supported and I think that it should I I would like to have more videos or crazy ideas with videos um, on it. and I think that the one of the biggest trends in terms of like products and in terms of creative strategy, it's storytelling. Mm -hmm. So I would like to have more interesting patterns on the web, which like uh, kind of drown the, the user and tell the story. So I would like to forget about three columns in Bootstrap and call to action button. I would like to have the story on the web with, uh, with some crazy effects of videos. And I think that it's it's worth yeah in terms of future I think it's worth observing websites like yeah Bloomberg like the Guardian like ti like uh, New York Times uh, they are like you know big companies and they have to somehow in the, um, make the the content attractive so they're like probably having some sorts of discussion what should be the next step in terms of like the the web web design so I think it also uh, the inspiration is there. Well, thank you. So I guess we'll be waiting for your next talk then. Oh, yeah. See you next year. <laughs> um, what do you think is the reason for uh, all websites looking the same? Is it because um, it's just too hard to implement? Mm -hmm. Are, are the, the, the things you just showed, SVG and Clipper, yeah. too, too, too hard to, to work with for developers? Or is it that um, browser support is a barrier? Or maybe is it that we're just tired of web development and yeah. we just don't care anymore. We just uh, yeah. know, put some content online and use uh, the same old designs. Yeah, I because if you look at sorry, yeah. if you look at uh, uh, portfolio sites of developers or designers, they basically all look the same. And um, we should be role models actually. But why aren't we using clip path and, and, and shape and so on? Yeah, what do you think I think that reason? like the, the answer lies in like many areas. Like first, yeah, uh, sometimes it might be like uh, the no factor because of the the, the 
the browser support. Some people really do care, and I think it's important, and accessibility. But some pages should be crazy, like portfolios. And, and I think that maybe it's like the matter of that like, we're living in the era of dribbleization, unfortunately. Dribble, like shells, uh, beautiful stuff, and I really love it. But in the end, like, my, like many uh, projects there, many shots, are the same. And I think that we're trying to be like designers we admire and we try to kind of copy their, their style. Um, but in the end, like we should ask ourselves, okay, so what, like if I prepare the, uh, the portfolio for myself, uh, I should answer like, okay, so what's my personality? So whether I should have brutalist website, maybe I should have something more playful or sweet. Uh, so I think that portfolio, pro portfolio size, is, this is the perfect example to, to experiment. And I think that, yeah, that maybe we, we're just like, we're, s like, we're still uh, like focused on one area. We're, we're attending tech events, we're attending tech meetups, but maybe we should meet with architects or artists and go, the, go with them for the exhibit, like on exhibitions and draw, like uh, take the inspiration from different areas. Like for me it was print, but for you it might be the, I don't know, maybe the, uh, the dish you get at the restaurant because it's going to be beautiful. So I think that we should be more open and it's, it's about like uh, combining different passions, areas. So yeah, just so my message is just like have your eyes widely open and ears because music can be inspiring as well. So I think the reason are like, yeah, or sometimes clients are too serious and like, like forget about brutalism because like, yeah, this button has to be blue and has to be with uh, this typeface and forget about any change, so, yeah. Okay, I think our time is up and uh, our amazing speaker will join all of you in uh, coffee area. Uh, thank you a lot, that was amazing. And we have a few more activities. Please, please, please don't leave yet. Uh, first of all, uh, you had three questions about future of uh, CSS, about future of design, and about why all websites are the same. Which one do you like most? All of them. Please, select one. <laughs> no, like... Uh, mm. I have only one book. Okay, what is the... Is the book in English or in Russian? In Russian. Okay, so sorry, Manuel. <laughs> so, um, I really like... like all of the questions, but um, if I have to pick, uh, I'm picking about the, the what's your name? Alex. Alex. So okay. But uh, I'm having stickers, so. Спасибо. Аплодисменты. Маленький презент от наших uh, партнеров. Надеюсь, тему. И последнее, and last, uh, a little token from us uh, so you can remember all these uh, emotions and uh, drink uh, something uh, hot uh, yeah, on Yeah, less waste, less waste. Yep. Let's, let's not Thank you again. Yeah, <laughs> thank you.